probably second to your bull rope, most important piece of equipment you're gonna have in your gear bag is a set of spurs. This particular set of spurs is a set that I have ridden with the exact same style. This is actually the second pair that I got, but I have never ridden with another style of spur other than this in my entire career. And we'll talk about the components of your spur. Basically, it's a heel strap underneath. You've got your tie down strap. Obviously, this goes around. This is the body of your spur. And then you've got your shank. The shanks can come in different angles, but attached to the shank is your rowel. Now, different guys ride with different angles because of the way that they ride. I mean, you're not gonna change a guy's riding style. Look at Tuff Hedeman. That guy couldn't turn his toes out to save his life. So the, the angle of his shank was turned more. This is a 22 and a half degree. This is a pretty standard degree on your, on your shank itself. Now, the shape of the shank, I have just a straight shank, has a little bit of a drop. Some guys ride with a shank that actually points up. This depends on your riding style. It depends on how long your legs are. It depends on what is comfortable to you to be able to get a good solid hold with your feet. Now, you want to put these spurs on and it's important where they go. You don't want them too high. Some guys like them riding clear down on their on their spur ridge of their boot. So you just put your foot up, you run your, your heel strap underneath and pop it on. Now, you don't want it riding too high because then it gets up into like your Achilles tendon and if you get a good hold, it's gonna hurt. Some boots have rawhide heels, some don't. Some have big spur ridges, some don't. This is again just personal preference to you. So you just put your spur on and then strap it down. Uh, there are nylon straps that uh, can go clear around and tie your boot on. There's leather straps. This again is just personal preference to you. So we've got our spurs on our boot itself. Now there's a difference. Guys ride with pull-ons, guys ride with uh, lace-ups. I think some guys probably ride with lace-ups because I know some have, have like broken an ankle and, and obviously it's swelled up so they ride with a lace-up for a little while and end up liking it. I've rode with lace-ups, I've rode with pull-ons, uh, you know it doesn't really make much of a difference. The only thing with me with lace-ups was the laces kind of flexed a little bit and it didn't feel like I could get them as tight every time and be consistent. So I go with the pull-on type and I'll just demonstrate how I pull mine on and there again it's just a little bit of personal preference. Okay. So I, I've got my leather strap, and then I go underneath the heel of my boot. I go underneath, that way it pulls everything up. Keeps my boot pulled on tight, okay? And then I go behind, and then just start weaving it around. As long as it doesn't cut the circulation off to the, your foot, and it's comfortable. I can put my boots on and tie them on six hours before the event and I'll be able to walk around and I do not ever lose circulation in my foot. There's my boot tied on. I have a little slack. It feels like I get a hold better. So this is just the basics. You can do it different ways. Guys don't run them underneath sometimes. Some guys just tie them on. Some guys use dog collar style tie-ons. This is personal preference to you, but this is how I do it.